Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesday. This is Lisa. It's so good to have you here with me, isn't it? How are you feeling? I hope uh, life is treating you well. Today, we're going to be talking about the power of words. And uh, for those of you who have ex experienced, not X, experienced hypnosis and hypnotherapy, um, let me see here. Ah, yes. We are live. For a moment, it clicked and said, you are not here. Hi, Seda John. How are you? We're going to be talking about words and the power of words and suggestions. You know, for those of you who have experienced hypnosis, it's absolutely amazing. And for those of you who have not, there is this uh, little lingering question or wondering what it feels like, what it is like. Uh, so allow me to share something. I had a client come in yesterday and after our session, she was like, this was it? It was like a guided visualization. And yet I couldn't move my hands and my feet were so heavy, but I knew if I wanted to move, I could, but I relaxed. I couldn't move. And she says it, it was she used the word eerie well eerie can be so magical because i truly believe the power of suggestions and words hello Henri. hi henry the power of suggestion is so wonderful you know even you must have experienced understanding that words are what creates everything i mean when we want to invent something it starts in your thoughts right and then you imagine it and after you imagining it you put it to either on paper or you speak it and you share it you have to create something and all that comes from thought so our thoughts are very powerful and as I was visualization and for her to relax utterly, completely, this power of a suggestion is like, you can do this on your own. And that's what I do. I teach you self-hypnosis so you can relax yourself at the same time. The reason I'm saying it is because the word switch it's such an easy word, you know, like a click. And when you say something and instead of saying cancel, cancel, or no, disregard it, you can say, I'm switching it. So words, the power of words, when you want to make a shift in life, even if you have not been hypnotized, when you become aware, because your mind has this conscious and we drift from our conscious mind, bypassing our critical factor, which is analyzing and judging and criticizing and reasoning, you know, all that, that filter to drop into the subconscious mind, we need to have some tools. So today I'm going to give you some tools. And one of the tools is when you want to make a change in your life, you speak in the here and now as if you are stepping into what you want to create. The power of suggestion is not what I want in the future, but I am creating this. I am this. I feel this. So you speak in the here and now and as if it is happened already. I know we cannot fool the subconscious, but if you were to do this over and over, over and over for 33 consecutive days and repeating something that you believe in, that you believe in and you desire it from your heart, from your mind, and that is exactly what you want in your life, believe it or not, not only consciously and subconsciously in the law of attraction and the universe, everything there is that 
certain power that works. Second is whenever you are planning something, I wrote all this, and you add this aspect of health and love and willingness. So you bring joy to it. You do everything as I've shared before. Hi, Mark. Uh, as I've shared before, we move towards our most dominant thought pattern. And if it is something that is positive, and if it is something that we desire, like going to a prom and we must be like 20 pounds uh, less and you want to lose 20 pounds because the prom is in two months, believe it or not, if that desire of being 20 pounds less be going to that prom with that special girl or boy that desire becomes so vivid and clear your body fat and you the weight will come off just for the prom so if you want to excel in something and win a competition and you say, this is my break it or make it. And this is exactly what I must do when the dire desire is so strong and it's joyful and loving, it becomes a reality. The next thing is you drop into that because you're now, your why is stronger going to that prom with that girl is your dream girl you ask that girl out that desire is so vivid is so strong that automatically everything works to make that happen so that your because your why and speaking in the now is what creates the subconscious as making it reality why because the subconscious mind has absolutely no analyzing and judging it does exactly what you ask it to when there's the belief system so change is is constant in our life and i want to talk about it when we have a clear um, understanding of what we want we make it happen another part of the words that we use I should do this, should is a doubt. Should I? That means I'm questioning it. And if I were to say, should I eat a pint of ice cream? And you can easily turn around and say, well, I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. By saying, yeah, go ahead, because my question is what a word should, that means I choose not to make the decision i'm not taking that responsibility and i'm putting it on you when you say yes go ahead and eat the pint of ice cream if i were to get sick after eating that ice cream guess what i'm not blaming me i'm blaming the person i asked i diverted my responsibility to another person so should is a low energy negative for the subconscious so i would ask you that if you want to do something instead of using the word should you can say i will i can i will not that means you it is your choice it is your will either you do or you do not no it, it you don't uh, another one is bringing more gratitude and kindness. So there's ways that you can uh, shift words. Instead of saying, it is hard, I can't, it is hard, you can easily say, it may not be as easy. It is not easy. So you're saying, it is not easy. But when we say it is hard, then I've already blocked myself. It's hard and I am not going to do it. I am broke. That word of breaking, that word of broke, it's already giving me a sense of breaking down. So it's low energy. Instead, we can say, I am not as rich as rich that means there is a possibility i can become rich 
or richer. I am broke versus, I mean, I am not rich or as rich versus I am broke. Another word is I am afraid. We can say, I have no courage today to do this. That means today I am not as courageous. Instead of I am afraid. Or you can even shift it and say, I must find the courage within me because today I do not have it. And when you think about courage and concentrate on the word, such a positive word as courageous, then automatically our subconscious is looking, where do we lose? Or it shows that I was courageous. I am not today. Not that I am afraid today. Or I've been afraid. And instead of saying I am sick, what if we were to say, I do not feel as healthy today my health has declined that means i already had health but today my health has declined so in a way there are words that disempower us and there are words that share a story and tell a part of us and it reminds our subconscious that I was healthy, I am not as healthy. I was courageous, I am not as courageous. I was, I could do a lot of things. Today, I find that I am not able to. And the why, then you can turn around and say, because. So, a part of hypnosis and hypnotherapy is the language of how we speak with our clients and teach our clients to speak about themselves. You don't have to be hypnotized in such a deep state. Raise your hand that you have seen something, witnessed something on TV that has impacted you emotionally, you have read something, that storyline that was so touching that it shifted something inside you and reminded something that you have experienced. Could be about a loss, a grief, a winning, a championship that you, you were rooting for the person, the main character the hero of the book and you got so excited that excitement everything about our life comes from our thoughts as a matter of fact there is no way you can have any emotion about anything that you have not experienced before because it's not a part of your psyche. It is not part of your memory. So a part of what I do as a hypnotherapist is get to know the words that may impact and have direct impact on your experiences. It's not sitting and opening a script and reading a script when I work with my clients, but as understanding the emotions, the history, it's evoking what was, it's understanding their history to know what's a part of their life. And if I can turn around and say, you're such a great, great swimmer, and I do this entire visualization about them going into an ocean and water and leaving all their, um, all their um, 
pain and hurt away and just letting the water take it away. What if that person has never experienced going to the ocean? They've never been to the ocean side and they live in this rural place, never traveled. Thank you, Chris. Hi, dear. <laughs> That's it. See, we are all unique. We're so special. And I call it special because when you don't give yourself credit, no one else can give credit. One of the biggest things I like, and I have it on my calendar, on my desk, it says, stop shrinking yourself for others. And I'm getting emotional about this because so many of my clients come and they repeat words from the past that has been told. And it's been banked in your uh, in their memory bank. And I bet you anything, you've got words and gestures and suggestions that maybe from the time that you were a teenager, from the time that you were a kid, it's been banked in your memory and, you, and you've experienced things, you've seen things that has trickled down to where you are today. And certain words, I can't, I am broke, I am afraid. And it's realizing, and if you can do a switch or cancel and recognize the such low energy words that maybe impacted you as a child, as a teenager, that today, it's not working for you anymore. So stop shrinking yourself, not only to those words, gestures, and experiences, but find words that empower you. I am not as rich. Well, how rich do I want to be? What is the number that I want to reach? Richness is not always in dollars. Richness can also be in the way you live, in the comfort of your living. I was talking to another client, feeling overwhelmed, overburdened with all the things she said, yes, 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 yes. And remember, actually not remember as you, but you might have experienced it as well. She said, there came a time that I wanted nothing but peace and I wanted to be free. But she could not find a way to be free. So something traumatic happened in her life two years ago and she thought it was her doom not realizing that, that is the exact thing that the body did created that has helped her say no 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 and today she is free of so many of them. And all she has to do is tend to herself, to her body, to her dis-ease. Hmm? We cannot experience things and we cannot shift things in our mind or body or psyche or emotions that it's not in our memory bank. So the body said, you wanna be free? You can't do this on your own? Let me help you. And the body did. 
raise your hand, say yes, if you have experienced this, because sometimes, you know, just like, <laughs> I love Garth Brooks. Well, I don't love Garth Brooks. I love the artist Garth Brooks. I love his songs. And if you don't know who Garth Brooks is, by all means, he's one of the top country singers. And when I used to do country dancing and everything, I mean, when Garth was on, everything stopped. And I probably have all his recordings, all his uh, discs, recordings, CDs, everything. And um, there's this one song. It's called Unanswered Prayers. Do you know how many times not only I have listened to that, but played it for my clients? And if you are one of my clients and you are here or you are not watching it at this very moment and you're watching it on replay, by all means, would you please make a comment and say, yes, Lisa, you played it for me. Uh, because there is this part and the story goes, Garth goes to his high school or college reunion and he goes to that reunion with his current wife. And as he is there um, walking by, he sees his old high school flame, the one he had dreams about that he used to pray that he wants to get married to. That was she was the love of his life. And as they stand there talking, he's reminded of those times. And after a while, he looks at his wife and remembers his life. And that's the story that says, thank you, God, for unanswered prayers. Because sometimes we pray for something and we ask for something that, yes, we may want it. And then we turn around and say, but I asked God and didn't give it to me. And I'm sure you have heard that when something, the door is closed or there is a cloud, there's always a silver lining. That means. Sometimes when we are in the midst of being broke, feeling sick, being afraid, having a hard time, we're not seeing the silver lining. We are not seeing why the body broke you down because you said yes, yes, yes to so many things. And yet you wanted to be free of those and could not see a way out. So when he says, thank you, God, for unanswered prayers. Because he looks at his wife. And recognizes how wonderful his life is today. The here and now. And that's how I started. Every thought, every idea, every concept, every image that is created by you, for you, even the words you speak, be aware. Is it loving? Is it kind? Or are you hurting yourself? Dissing a part of you. And no matter what mistakes you believe you have done, we all make mistakes. I don't think there is a human being that has not erred in their life. There's always an error. We have all erred. But if we constantly rehash the error and the mistake, and not forgive ourselves. You know, that aha moment that comes and you say, aha, I understand. That 
was a mistake. I did not recognize it. I was down on myself. I shrunk myself for others. Today, I stand up for me. Today, I notice it. Today, I choose to recognize and become richer in heart, richer in words, richer in life. And being rich can be the next time that you go to our restaurant. And usually, if you count 15% tip or the driver nowadays who brings it to you, and usually you tip a dollar or two, give them $5. Feel rich. And when you feel that richness, you give. By giving more, it's about you. It's not about them. They will become happier and you feel richer. Well, I'm glad it is. Hi, Mark says, Lisa is wisdom. I don't know about wisdom, but I got to tell you, I started doing this exact thing by shifting my words. Uh, and I remember my master hypnotist, God bless his soul, Gil Boyne. He was this most powerful human being. And we were, I remember being in class, and this is 23, 24 years ago. Yes, I've been doing clinical hypnotherapy for 21 years. And allow me to revert back and say one thing. When you come to, when I work with my clients, and maybe I don't hypnotize you to the deepest, deepest reservoir of your subconscious mind. But what if on that session, you get to shift your perception, you get to shift an emotion? Because we can't always heal the child within, that inner child. But if there was an emotion, a feeling that that child was carrying until today, if your inner child has been stuck with a word an experience, and if I can help you resolve it, shift it, switch it to feel better, I think that is more important than me hypnotizing you each and every time. Because once you have that aha moment, you are doing your own work thereafter. Because what is therapy? It's called self-therapy. And for me, is being that bridge to help my client go from here to here. And it doesn't matter if I use the tools of hypnosis, use the tools of timeline therapy, regression all the way to your childhood or past life regression or NLP or managing with a technique for anxiety. Those are all tools and techniques or words and powers of words. But if I can teach you how to relax, how to sh shift, how to recognize, and by doing that, you do the work. That is more profound than anything else. Yes, you may call that coaching in a deeper level, whatever it is. If I can help you, then I've done my work. So richness, is I may not have a million dollars today, today. But if I have helped a client go from A to Z, 
and get to where they want to. Not about me, where they want to. It's a million dollar result. Now back to Gil Boyne. Thank you, Gil Boyne. He used to say, shoot us for shit. Sorry for using that word. But stop saying should. Put the power in your hand. Stand up and say, I will. And I can. And for that, I would like you to start thinking words that are empowering. You can even Google empowering words. And if you become a part of my, you can go to my website, healwithin.com. And there is a place that it says there's three boxes. And one of them talks about the book, my habit, a part of the book that I am in, a part of a best-selling, yes, being a best-selling author in the One Habit book with Forbes Riley and Steve uh, uh, Samblis and so many other authors. It's a powerful book. It's an incredible book. You can either download and get that book. The middle one is always talking. Uh, it's about the news of who's my next real talk interview that I will be doing and an incredible interview coming um, next week. Uh, you need to tune in uh, next week for the real talk with Lisa power powerhouse lady that I have been adoring and admiring and kudos to this lady you need to watch and the, the other one is for you to put your name and become part of our uh, newsletter information that comes out and daily affirmations because I send da daily affirmations that are empowering, that all you have to do is just read your daily affirmations every single day and start your day with that. So be a part of not only my newsletter and everything else that I bring value. And yes, if you wanna book a session for a consultation, I'm offering a 30 minute uh, discovery session. Why not use that? If I can be of help, by all means, that's what it's there for. Everything I do is to help you shift your thoughts, your ideas, your concepts, your mindset, and reset to be the best version of you. I've done it for me. I healed myself through hypnotherapy, and I went from the legal field instead of becoming an attorney once I was a paralegal, nine years of doing that, what I call it from the masculine energy to the feminine, that's my version, not yours. Because there, I love working with attorneys and I admire them. I wanted to become one, right? But I found my calling. And I am so happy. This is where my richness is that I can reach you and help you heal within. Because it only starts with one thought to go from pain to gain. My name is Lisa Bubari, your expert hypnotherapist. And I thank you for being here with me today, today. And with that, God bless you. And may the universal light surround you. See you next week. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.